Hello and welcome to McBunker Studios. In this video, I'm continuing my M32 edit series, and today we're looking at the setup page of the software. There's lots of useful things in here, so let's get right into it. So, first things first, you'll find the button to open the setup page over here on the far right in the side panel. Hit that button, and up opens our setup window. So when you first open the setup window, you'll be met with the first page of the setup window, which is the connection page. So here you'll see all the mixers on the network. Currently there are none. And you, when you click on one, you can find the name for it. You can also enter a manual IP in here if you know what IP address it is, but it's not showing up. Of course, you can rescan and rename mixers here. This will read out with um, model, whether it's an X32 or an M32 or a rack or, or a comp compact or whatever. It's IP address and the name it currently has, which you can put in on the mixer itself or through here. Over here, you've got your connection button um, and then you can set it to auto connect or auto sync. Here, it's you can set synchronization direction so if you want to take the mixer settings and put them onto your PC, or take the settings you've just applied to your PC and load them onto the mixer, you can go either way. That just applies to the current settings. Doesn't get rid of any scenes or any non-scene related settings. And then you've got this, uh, the IP address of this computer, this Mac, and the version of the software that, uh, of the M32 edit that I'm currently running. Next page, we've got the mixer button, mixer page. Here you can change a bunch of core uh, settings on the mixer. So you can change the sample rate, 48 or 44.1 are the only available options for the X32 and M32. Some mixers have higher options. There's plenty of debate about those two if you want to read into differences and what people prefer. Generally, 48 is the highest standard generally considered a better option. Then we've got the synchronization settings. This is about the uh, the master clock setting. Generally it's set to the mixer. You can set it to um, the... If you've got another mixer on AS50A, it would be... We can set the expansion card. That's what that's about. Show control. This controls what scene or page comes up when you go when you press the show control button, view show control, you can either go to the cues page, the scenes page, or the snippets page. Um, show you that here. So I just hit the scenes button and I get the show control window and it takes me straight to scenes. But if it was set somewhere else, I would get the cues. If I set it to cues, cues would come up first or snippets, snippets would come up first. That here, as I mentioned in the last video, is panning mode. Here is where you can decide what panning mode you want. You can go to LCR or you can have left, right, mono. General preferences. Scene go next is about uh, when you're running snippets and scenes. When you hit go, what happens next? If you have the selected, brings the next scene up. Um, goes next. But if you don't, it doesn't, it stays on the scene you currently have selected and uh, just, you'll just have the option of loading that scene again by hitting go. Safe main levels means that if the mixer turns off, the main fader and sub and front subwoofer mono center fader will uh, both go down to zero, negative infinity, if the desk loses power. And 12 hour clock mode just says that the clock sits in 12 hour mode as opposed to a 24 hour mode. That's a toggle there. If you want. Mute system. So if it's in, so if you select DCA groups, uh, when you mute a DCA, it hard mutes the channel, meaning it won't go through any buses or auxiliaries. And channel on just changes all the mute buttons to say on off uh, instead of mute um, and unmute. So 
shifts where the lights are as shifts how the lights work, essentially. If you're not, if you're not, if you're looking at the desk, it just shifts how the lights work. If you're looking at the console, at the software, it actually changes the name on it as well. Um, link preferences. This determines. These first four here determine what happens when you link a channel as to how much is linked, whether you, you want the EQ, the same for both, the dynamics, the fader, the config. I've got all selected. The last one here says the when you're adjusting the front of house fader, that also adjusts the uh, mono or center channel fader. So I've got that deselected. GUI preferences, GUI preferences, just a bunch of user interface things and how things look. So here you've got, you know, where, what opens on PC control, show control, what's at the top of the, um, of the fader banks. You know, select a screen follows mixer, or select a channel follows mixer. You can set things up here, so, play channels. Um, Bus button names so when you look over. So here we have GUI preferences. This is just showing you a bunch of um, how changes in how things look as opposed to, and some functionality, but not really any functionality that matters. It's just about, you know, how you're using it. So I won't go too much depth here. There's really not that much um, really going on here. There are some settings about, um, you know, the screen following, you know, selected screen follows mixer or selected channel follows mixer. That's been interesting, but I'll, I'll just keep moving on. I've got MIDI control. It's not something I really use with my mixer a lot or any of this line, um, but you can set up X touches or other MIDI inputs and you can determine what you receive, what you transmit, the MIDI input, MIDI output, what's being controlled, and whether you're using X-Touch over MIDI or over Ethernet, and whether you're using the card MIDI or the um, physical MIDI ports on the desk. Next, we've got the preamp. These are all just, um, you can change the preamp, essentially the gain uh, level of all the inputs here. You've got your locals, your AS50s, a and B. Lastly, the card. This is pretty simple. I don't have a card installed, but because uh, I don't have a desk connected. But if you have a desk connected, it'll show you what card you have, and some settings around the card. Like if you're using um, two channel or thirty-two channel, and different inputs and some settings uh, you might want around the card. For example, if you have the X USB, it'll give you the option of Firewire or USB or you know there's the X Live which has some options as well so that's there. Uh, if there are any other questions around the setup window uh, let me know I'll be happy to go over these in more detail if that's something you require or are interested in. Okay I hope you learned lots from that video and uh, it was really informative and helpful. Again if you do want to learn anything more about specific parts of that window let me know down in the comments below and I'll be happy to help you out. If you haven't seen my earlier videos, go check those out. Be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you are made aware of future videos I post about in this series or other series. And go to some audio.